This video is brought to you by the No Fear Community. It's the usual thing. Human nature doesn't change, but the expression of it does. People's habits change. And to some extent, the difference between the old ones and the young ones is the old ones, they didn't learn about this when they were kids. And kids are fundamentally un unafraid, so they'll try anything. They especially the current kids, they understand there's an undo button. The grown-ups are afraid of breaking things, so they won't... The way to learn something is to try it and make mistakes and then do it, but the grown-ups are afraid that they'll do something and they'll break the machine or it won't work, and so they, they don't experiment the way the kids are, kids do. So you have people who feel less comfortable with the computers in general. Then the second big thing is the kids are used to digital images, they're used to multitasking, they're used to things being quick and images and fast forward and so forth and that's really great but I think there's a, a downside to it too which is older people tend to think narratively, they think cause and effect, they think sequentially, they, they care about logic and structure whereas kids are just more focused on images and texture and on the internet, in the computer, things can be undone, but in real life, you can't undo certain things. You send a nasty email to somebody and you can't get it back. You, you break something, you die. You know, there's, there's lots of things where there is no undo button, and I think to some extent, maybe young people depend on the undo button too much. The way you pull people together is, is the usual. You, get them to try and think like the other one, you try to create empathy, you, you try and get their attention for one another, and plain old good manners and civility goes a long way. Just listen to what other people are saying, and in every relationship, both sides need to give 60% to get to the middle. So the first lesson is don't just think about what you're saying, think about what the other person is hearing. If you really do that, you'll figure out, well, how do I tailor my message so that this other person will understand it? How do I present things in a way that will resonate with the other guy, will make sense to him? How do I make my argument convincing? It's not by having facts, but by understanding the other person's point of view and then making my point, but from the other person's point of view. The best way to start doing that is to listen, because then you understand the other person's point of view. He rushes Russia's got the internet too and it's kind of interesting to see how much we think the internet has a culture and then to see the internet in Russia and it's actually got a very strong Russian culture. The, the best thing the internet does is simply it encourages people to ask questions to suddenly from a society in which nobody ever answered any questions and you could be shot for asking questions. It's considered natural to answer, to ask and answer questions. So that, that's been a real, really important shift. Then of course, there's the economic efficiency that the internet brings. But the third thing that's really interesting is the creation of a consumer market that talks back. In, in the old days, or in the big business market, you can, you can bribe people to do things. You can bribe people to buy your software. You can make things happen. But you can't bribe millions of consumers to use your services on the internet. And so the internet marketplace, the consumer internet, the social networks, they're relatively open and transparent and free from corruption. And that's, so there's this big battle in Russia. The, the internet generation, the internet community is still small relatively. But it's, it's a huge change from the traditional rush of oil and government and big institutions and state control and the people I know, the internet people, the programmers, they're, they're Russia's big hope. Um, China, China and Russia are, to a lot of people, they're sort of the same. You know, first it was Russia, now it's China, but they're very, very different. Russia, ironically, is, is much more transparent. You, a lot of people in Russia talk about all of Russia's problems. They criticize the government. The, crit the government criticizes back and puts out its own propaganda, but there's no shortage of open discussion about Russia's problems. Whereas in China, there's still this issue around losing face and, and not 
I've talked to a lot of well-meaning Chinese, and they say, you know, you shouldn't discuss these problems. It's just let the government solve them quietly, but don't don't talk about them. It's just it's not polite. It will exacerbate the problems. And of course, my perspective is kind of a free-thinking American Sunlight Foundation kind of person is you've got to talk about your problems in order to deal with them. So those two cultures are very, very different. And I would say the Chinese culture is more brittle. The Russian culture is more passive and fatalistic. What we need to do in terms of globalization isn't so much dealing with other cultures. It's dealing with our own reality, which is that we're overpaid by world standards for the pitiful amount of work we do, that we're undereducated, that we are fundamentally whiners. I mean, we have, we have some amazing things. We have a free country, we have freedom of speech, we have relatively efficient economic markets, but we are undereducated and we, we're not inspiring anymore. Our country used to be inspired and want to be leaders and people worked hard to build a greater society and now we we become kind of complacent and la lazy and whiners and you know that doesn't mean there are not a lot of people in this country who are suffering economically in other ways but we should educate our people better understand that we need to work harder that a lot of people live with a lot less than we do that we're over consuming that we're using up resources, we're polluting the atmosphere, all this stuff. And it's not because we're evil. We need to build a system that internalizes those costs so that when we're using up natural resources, we pay for it, and that will make us use fewer. We need higher tax on gasoline, that kind of stuff. And then we can be part of making the world better. But we need to fix at home rather than worry about how we adapt to some other foreign culture. We should travel the world so we understand it but it's, it's our culture we need to fix. I just want to mention that the most exciting thing is to create something new. To, I, mean, I spend my time helping new companies to exist, and I love what I do. Otherwise, I couldn't do it. So the most important thing in terms of anybody's life is believe in what you do, because then it's easy to do it. It's hard to do stuff you don't really believe in. It's hard to do stuff you don't really care about. This video is brought to you by the No Fear Community.